if you fly a drone up to 250 grams, then you can voluntarily have the yeah, uh, player yeah. ID, but you don't have to have one. That's why I just asked you if yeah. you had one, and, and the answer is no. Yeah. Okay. Whereas it's like saying, have you got an HGV license? It's yeah. irrelevant, isn't it? So welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're taking a look at HMP Watton. This is a category C prison and it holds 841 inmates. We've only just arrived and already we can see the big gate open there, look, the vehicle lock. They'll close this door before they open the other. She's getting the mirror out so she can see underneath the vehicle to make sure there's nothing uh, underneath it. We don't see that very often, do we? Using the mirror underneath. But she just spotted me. So I think she'll uh, go and get somebody to speak to us. HMP Watton. This is where all the vehicles have to uh, stop and wait their turn before the lady comes and calls you in, as we saw. The Hovis lorry was first, but the little van, Q jumped. It's not fair on Mr. Hovis, is it? HMP Watton first opened as a detention center for boys under 18 in 1966. Since May 1990, it has held people with convictions for sexual offences who are willing to participate in treatment programmes. The prison had an operational capacity of 841, with three accommodation blocks, A wing, B wing and C wing. These wings are mostly made up of single occupancy cells, though a small number of cells do hold two men at a time. Over 90% of prisoners at Watton are serving sentences of more than four years, and two thirds are aged over 40. The eligibility for entry to HMP Watton are that prisoners should be A, be at security category C, B, have at least six months of their sentence left to serve, and C, not to require the services of a full-time MO. People should also not be maintaining their innocence with regard to their offences. Preference is given to people who are assessed as being suitable for treatment programmes available at the prison. So they have closed the door now. They have started to create a bit of privacy. So we're not going to go in anyway. We're just going to have a look around. But um, the normal signage. No cameras allowed, look. That relates to when you go inside. And it's got a nice footpath that leads all the way on the outside. <laughs> this is funny, look, a little security box here. But on the bottom, where the pallets broke, they've just put two little bricks there. Not very safe, is it? Somebody could easily kick that. Wow, you got loads of equipment on your belt, ain't ya? I didn't know you carried all that. What you got? Parva? That looks like Parva to me. No, that, that's the canister there at the back. What is it? Oh, a stick. Oh, right. You get to take that home. Oh, right. It's just the belt. Ah, I got you. I got you. I got you. Do you know this footpath? Does it lead all the way around the outside? I like your eyes. Have you got contact lenses in? Are they natural? Wow, that's unique. <laughs> oh dear. I'm gonna see where this path leads anyway, mate. I'll, Cause I don't think they're gonna open it if I'm around here, so I'll walk away. So yeah, let's have a little walk around, see what we can see. They're all wondering what the hell's going on at the lock. But I would have thought they'd let them in by now. But we're also seeing lots of dodgy wiring again. You know, why put wiring on the outside of a prison like that? It's just like, it's in a very vulnerable position. And if anybody wanted to do anything to this prison, surely that uh, wiring would be the first target. 
So the public footpath leads to this area and we can see some residential housing over there. So there's no doubt at all that this is public. So let's carry on. We are being followed now by the camera up there. So they've spotted us nice and early. They're doing a good job. So it's interesting to see how they've recently blocked this part off. You can see it was a V-shape back in the day, but some sort of assessment recently has uh, made them block it off. And we do take notice of the signs. So when it says no admittance to unauthorized persons beyond this point, we do not go past, although it is publicly accessible. The right thing is, if there's a sign there, obey it. So I will not be walking down that path. And here we have the training department. So you've got the prison there, the training department there, and just normal residential houses there. Would you like to live this close to the prison? Even the bench is chained down, look. All vehicles are liable to be searched. Well, we just saw that with the mirror, didn't we? All visitors to the establishment are liable to be searched. Well, that's standard. All drivers must report to the gate lodge. Woo! The gate lodge. A nice McCormick GX40 there. You don't see these every day. Very, very useful. But if it's going on the road, we need the number plate correct in. That's getting a bit old now, isn't it, that one? The 1520. <laughs> Still going well though, is it? Can't get it going, typical. Has this one got a number plate as well? No, sure, yeah, it has. I can go on the road then. And look, they've even locked up the grip bin. Wow, they don't trust anyone round here, do they? He's managed it. Oh, you're running out of battery now. <laughs> I think you're gonna to have to use your winch. So here we go, look. The winch has been pulled out. It's still got loads and loads of rope on there ready, but it's got the remote control. He can steer it himself and he can just pull it on as slow or as fast as he likes. As easy as that. Is it a five ton winch that? Yes, mate. Easy work that was. I'm surprised you didn't do that to, to start with. <laughs> Two minutes of trying to start one of these things, I'd get uh, bored. Well done, mate. So as we walk along the perimeter of this prison, we notice the vehicle in the staff car park. Look at that. Now they're not very common, are they? The old Robin Reliance. Wow. Who remembers them? So we continue to walk around the perimeter. We come to this section here. We can just see a few signs on this post. Let's have a look, see what they say. And once again, We've got no unauthorized persons allowed beyond this point. Private land, no public right of way. So they are very good with their signage. So I will not be going down there today. We'll respect the signs and we'll just stay in the areas that we're allowed. So here we are. 
standing right next to this grit bin for the record and we have checked we are outside the geo fence so let's get david up the drone assisted visual information detective So as you can see it's a bit windy today even at this height the drone is struggling to stay locked onto that GPS so that's uh, that's why the footage was a bit shaky there so as you saw there we took the drone over it is quite windy today I mean look at the top of them trees there moving around uh, that's why the uh, the camera was shaking quite a bit it's the first time that's happened to me so yeah, the Hovis lorry finally got to make his delivery and we get another look inside the vehicle lock area. They've even got steps so that they can climb up and inspect the top of the vehicles. See those steps in there?
a rare glimpse inside the vehicle lock. It doesn't normally stay open for that long, does it? Welcome to HMP Watton. So I've just been researching this building, the visit centre, because it's quite confusing how it's got that uh, mega secure gate on the front door. Now, Rushcliffe Community and Voluntary Service manage and run this visitor centre at HMP Watton on behalf of the prison service. The website says, the centre is designed to provide a welcoming place for friends and families of prisoners to spend time and relax before and after their visit. The centre was opened on the 30th of June 2006 and during the first year the centre received 12,329 visitors of whom 1,361 were visiting for the first time. And we've even got the dog walkers walking through, look. She's just been to buy the paper walking the doggy through the prison grounds just confirms it's publicly accessible all day long so as you can see through the gate there they open the little hatch where the driver has to place his uh, belongings to be checked so it really is like um, getting screened like a proper visitor tiny little gap here next to the post So there you go, you can see that they come into the vehicle lock, both gates are closed, they check the vehicle over, we saw him checking the boot there, we've seen him earlier check underneath with the mirror, he places his belongings into the hatch on the right hand side, whether he gets them back or not right there and then I'm not sure, but then is uh, escorted through, like um, follow me sort of thing. So as you saw on the dash cam there, as we was driving away, we saw the drone police making its way down this direction. So we thought we'd just come back because we don't want them looking for us. We don't want them wasting any of their time looking for us, do we? But I was expecting them to be parked in this area, to be honest. So. Maybe it was just an unrelated coincidence that the drone police on Blues and Twos, yes, we can say that word now, Blues and Twos, <laughs> they were just heading in this direction just by coincidence, maybe. Let's have a little scour around the area to see if we can find them. We found them. The drone equipped vehicle, police and fire. Wow. Oh, we've got unit number two as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, mate. Anything you need to tell me first? Anything you need to say first? Body one video camera? Of course you do. Of course you do. Well, we're going to have a problem then. No, honestly, honestly, that is, that is the policy that you do need to adhere to. 
Yeah, yeah I know, we will come on to that, but let's... Are you aware of um, the body-worn video camera guidance? Should, he, should he have told me that he was recording? Should he? Yeah. Well, I'm recording now, I can tell you now. No, the question was, should he? Well, we're telling you now we're No, no, just the question about your colleague. Well, I'm telling you now, we are recording, I'm telling you now. Right, I don't like the tone. So, do you get that? So, yes. in essence, you should have. That's you, all. You knew that we were recording. No, no, you have to verbally announce at the we, first... We told you that we were recording. You didn't. But you're aware now, aren't you? Obviously, if we start off on a good foot, it helps, it helps don't it? Yeah. So, Sergeant, are you taking the lead on this one? Or are you leaving it to the drone expert? Yeah, drone expert. Drone expert, right. So, have you got any questions for yourself? Um, yes, have you been flying a drone today? I've been flying a drone. Are, are, you, are, you, are you aware, yeah. first of all, that where we are standing right now is not in a geofence? Are you aware of that? Yeah, but essentially, it's a rotten prison, and I'm going to check the map in a minute. Well, I'm going to check the map in a minute, because from, from what we've been told, you were standing here and flying the drone, so where were you flying your drone? At the, at the grip bin. It's exactly the same geofence what, location. What drone have you got? Um, a Mini 2, 249 grams. Have you got a flyer idea? Do you know the legislation around Class C0 drones? 100% yes. Yeah. So okay. You don't have to, however, you can voluntarily have one. So okay. I'm asking you if you've got one. I'm not so, flyer you. ID is not required. I've not said it's required. So, so forget said, that. I've said, have you got one? I'm not it's it's not required, so one. let's just ignore so that. You I'll only voluntarily have one. So if you fly your drone up to 250 grams, then you can voluntarily have yeah, the uh, yeah. ID, but you don't have to have one. That's why I was just asking you yeah. if you had one, and, and the answer is no. Yeah. Okay. Whereas it's like saying, have you got an HGV license? It's yeah. irrelevant, isn't it? Not necessarily, no. Because essentially, you didn't teach you to <laughs> flying the drone. Sorry? Where were you flying? Like, from here? Or? I stayed outside of the, the geofence. I went, uh, the geofence follows the fence line. Yeah. If you have a look on Drone Assist, the most up-to-date database as you know and I took it directly to the right stayed out of the geofence area so the prisons reportedly flown over they would do wouldn't they and over the prison there is a flight restriction I know my software won't even let me do it mate are you aware of the DJI go yeah it doesn't even let you fly into a, a restricted zone so I'm surprised you're asking that question you, um, there are ways to bypass it there oh well I've certainly not done any hack I always stay within the boundaries of the law when I fly my drone, especially near uh, sensitive places like this. Okay. Um, because essentially, so there is a flight restriction zone over Watson Prison. Yeah. Which, do you want me to show you the map on it? I've just showed you. You got, you showed me that no, location. No, look, look, there you go. Yeah. You see the... What I'm showing you is, that's a flight restriction zone. The, the prison have reported that you've flown over there. Which yeah, they've got no evidence of that, because I've got evidence to, to prove, prove otherwise from my flight path on the software. Am I right to see that? If I'm required to provide that um, at a later date, I can, but I'm, I'm sure you want to get their statement first. All, all I'm saying is if you're willing to provide Yeah, it. yeah, I'm willing to provide it. If we need to. Yeah. If we need to, yeah. I've, I've got all the evidence I need. Essentially, the reason we're here is we don't want there to be a security breach. Neither do I. Yeah, which is good. That's I'm only here to make a, a vi video about the prison, yeah. and it was great. And that's okay, obviously this is public yeah. property, so you are entitled to, however, we're just assuring that there's not a security breach to the prison, does that make sense? Of course, of so, course. So, obviously you are entitled to film out here, you are entitled to, to film, obviously there are risks about flying over the roads, however there's no restrictions over that, um, all we're here is to try and prevent that from occurring, does that make sense? Because obviously I hope you understand that sometimes prisons have flyovers where drugs are dropped in, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, of course. I've, I've gone through exactly the same scenario at a different prison before. I'm always making sure I stay way aw well away from the boundary of the geofence. I'm flying a drone that we're allowed to. I've got the operator ID, which you've not mentioned. That's the one that you ask should ask for, the operator ID. It also has to be written on the drone itself. And say like if it was flew over an area like this and they disabled it or, or it landed, the operator ID would link you to the person responsible for the drone. You never need to worry about who's flying it. That's irrelevant. It's not. It's it's pilot that's responsible for flying that drone. No. So even though your operator ID is responsible for that drone, your, um, the, the remote pilot for that drone is responsible for that drone. But you've got no right to ask the remote pilot their details because the flyer ID at the time of flying isn't required. So No, that? but I'm just mentioning, do you know the, the operator ID? If you ever get that, that links you to the, the person responsible and then it's down to them to tell you who was flying it. it the responsibility is on them. The person flying it, like me, I'm anonymous. 
It's, it's crazy, the laws are crazy like that. What's your plans for today? I'm going on to the next location now. I was actually um, heading that way and I saw you, yeah. your car, the drone, uh, drone police. I, I thought, it, surely it's not a coincidence. You, you've got to be heading this direction for me. So to save you looking, and I, I saw you've got a couple of units looking, I've come back voluntarily to answer your questions. Thank you very much for answering my questions. We're happy for you to go on your way now. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you very um, much. For the record, I, I can't see your number. On a, oh, there it is, 3882. They used to always have them on the epaulets, didn't they? Now, yeah. As long as they're identifiable on us. Okay. And the only thing I would say is just tell me if you're recording. It is within the policy, as, as Sergeant knows there. Sergeant, you're NH. What does that stand for? That's just before something I'm putting in. Oh, right, okay. NH. I see an X ray 07. Well, it was actually a, a tactical support group. Right, okay. And I thought, X-Ray, surely he's very high up. An OFC it was. Right, okay, yeah. OFC, yeah. So that's very high up, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I was lucky to meet right. him. We'll let you on your way. No, I want more conversation. All right, have a good day, chap. I'm just going to have a look at your vehicle while you're here. Have you got your own drone in there? Yeah. What weight's yours? Mine, I think five the moment is 6.4 kilos. 6.4 kilos, wow. So yeah, this is what we saw, police drone on the front there. So Nottinghamshire police have got their own dedicated drone expert. And he'll be called in the event of um, when the helicopter's not available, they'll take the drone expert there and take it up to get a view from the sky. So they're happy for me to go now. It says police and fire. So maybe it's to help the fire service as well pinpoint the actual location of the of the fire there but actually they're on police look we've got that symbol again so they sent an armed unit and a drone expert wow so off they go now to a more important job But they were quite polite to be honest. He didn't identify on his body worn video camera, but the sergeant there confirmed that he should have. Well, I'm taking that as confirmation that he should have. So I hope you've enjoyed that video from HMP Watton. If you have, give it a thumbs up for me and I'll see you on the next one guys. Bye bye for now.